today I'm going to show you a new AI image model called Flux Context and why it's so useful. So as you can see here, this only took six seconds, it only costed four cents, and it can do a lot more than that. We can change my hairstyle from hundreds of different hairstyles. We can put me in a viral scene. In fact, we can also take an image of me and then an image of a location and put me into that location in a very picturesque way. I'm also going to show you how to create an agent like this that generates your own content using this technology. I created this very quick logo on ChatGPT and then I went to Flux Context. I gave it the logo and I gave it the picture of myself and it put me in a hoodie looking just like me and you can see even down to the details where the little strings go over the logo. So why do we need this if we already have ChatGPT's image generation? I gave ChatGPT this image and I say to remove the glasses. And it does remove the glasses. But look at this result. This is the most triggering thing I've ever seen. So this hasn't just affected me when it comes to random stuff like this for fun. I've genuinely tried to make advertisements of people and ChatGPT morphs their face and it just really doesn't work. This is seriously not cool and I need to be fixed. So here we have Flux Context hosted on Replicate.com and here is the professional headshot version where we gave it the same image and then you can see the result here. This looks so much better, my mouth, my facial structure, everything looks so much more similar to the source image and the character consistency is so much better and the more iterations that I make on this the more I will still look like myself so that's the most important thing that Flux Context can do but it can do a lot of other stuff. My name is Adrian and I'm a digital marketer and online entrepreneur. I spent millions of dollars on ads and I've gotten billions of views on my pieces of content. Still was a little bit choppy, but the image part of it was great. If you're an online entrepreneur, you're going to want to stick to the end of this video because I'm going to show you how to create an N8N automation agent that utilizes Flux Context and allows you to build out a workflow and have it do whatever you want to do in an automated manner similar to a software as a service platform. Another thing that I wanted to mention Flux Context is available on a lot of these platforms that are similar to ChatGPT. So you can use one called OpenArt or you can use one called FreePick where you basically subscribe to a plan and then they allow to you, you to use it in a similar manner you would with ChatGPT where you just upload the image into the chat and start talking to the chat. In this video I'm using these API modules that have playgrounds online so you can log in to them replicate.com or fell.ai you can log in with an account, upload some credits, and then use them on the playground. And the reason why I'm doing this is because I'm going to show you how to use the API to connect it to an automation at the end of this video. But let's go over a few more cool things you can do with this model. And part of the reason why I'm using these playgrounds is I could just put a few dollars in and test them and I don't have to subscribe. Since starting this YouTube channel, I subscribe to probably three or four hundred dollars a month of AI tools just to review. So if I could get your guys' support, please subscribe on YouTube. And if you have an X, follow me on x.com slash mentor. That would be super appreciated. And if you really want to stay up to date, I have a completely free Telegram group, which will be linked also in the description. So back to Flux Context, there are so many different things you can do. Here is a module for restoring images. You can just use the main one and just tell it to restore image or you can use one of these specialized modules. This has a great example of an old photo that's been crumpled up, it's black and white, there's so many things wrong with it. And if you or your family have photos like this, I definitely recommend you try it and share the results. Uh, but as you can see, it's super hard to look at something like this. Um, but once you run it through the model with just four cents of compute, boom, you get it colorized, you, you get the facial structure looking the same, and it's as if this photo was taken 50 years into the future. So I thought that was really cool. So now let me show you the general model and some of the stuff you can do. So we have this basic image of a flower, and this is just the demo example. The prompt is put a donut next to the flower, and as you can see, it looks identical but it placed the donut just next to it. So the objects look very similar. And you could do something like this in ChatGPT, but like I said, it do, this one does text and faces extremely well. All right, so we're gonna do another test. We're gonna use the same demo image and we're gonna say, change the text on the flower to Adrian's flower and see how it goes. 
should be pretty quick and like it says here it's only going to cost us four cents let's see what that output looks like it says all Adrian's flower so I guess I didn't do it perfectly so not exactly perfect but you can see the text that I did right Adrian flower does show here and here completely perfect um, but I'm sure we get it in a few more tries so now we're going to do another test this is on a mid journey image that I just generated and we're going to have it change it from a summer season to a winter season and the painter is actually painting something so I wonder if it will show up in the reflection of the painting or just the overarching content itself okay so this is the image that it started with and it actually shocked me how well it did it so you can see it's summer here and when we switch it to winter not only is it winter the guy looks the same there's a ton of snow on him but the image itself has snow I'm pretty sure built into it which is pretty cool however the waterfall is still somewhat flowing so it's not always going to get the context of every little thing in an image okay I have to show you a better example of what you can do with text we took this random text from somewhere on mid journey it looks really cool one step shot not really sure what it means we're gonna use this font for our own creation so I gave it this prompt I said change the text on the first line to Adrian and then I did the same for the other two lines for a random saying that I could potentially use somewhere and you can see how this could be super useful in which you can copy basically any font online and use it for yourself and these cool 3d effects stuff like that and ChatGPT can do this for the most part, but it is very inconsistent, and your font will look different than the source font for sure. But in this case, check out the results. A little bit different, but incredibly good when it comes to controlling the output of exactly what I wanted it to be. And then the multi-image one, I have had a little bit more of issues. I showed you the one of me sitting in the desk earlier, but I will show you this other demo example where they're told to put the woman next to the house. You can see they have a picture of a woman here, probably AI generated, then a picture of a scenery with the house, and then you get the output. So it looks like the woman is standing right next to the house, and it did exactly what it was supposed to do in that case. So now we've gone to the fun part, and that is automating this model. This model is available from API, like I said, uh, using all the sandbox versions. In this example, I'm just going to be using the professional headshot version, and we're going to be using its API uh, through HTTP. You can see right here. So even if you don't know how to code, all you're going to need is an N8N account, and you're going to need to start another workflow. You can either do this on their website with a free trial or get one of their plans, or you can host N8N yourself for cheaper. And I have a link down below that will instruct you on how to do that if you want to do this for only $6.00. A month but anyways let's get into it this time I'm gonna be starting from scratch and I'm also going to be doing this in the most simple manner possible so I can show you proof of concept once you have this done I highly recommend you check out my other videos and you create different implementations and maybe you use different models on replicate uh, to come up with different stuff so this one is going to be super simple we're just going to start with a form trigger so that's just going to pop up a form and we're going to allow people to upload their photo and then tell us if they're male or female okay so here we have the authentication as none form pedal headshot generator form description i just said upload a clear image of yourself we have the first field name which is image uh, you can name this whatever you want, but it's going to be referenced in the future. And then the uh, element type is a file. We want don't want multiple files. We want this to be required. I hit plus one to do another field. This one we're going to ask gender. And the reason why we need this is when we do the request, we need to give it the image, we need to give it the gender, and then the aspect ratio. And I don't think we need the aspect ratio. It will default to whatever the image is, so that's fine. So anyways, I'm asking for the gender here. And then... Um, let's see if this works okay it pops this up pretty simple and this step is looking good so the next thing we're going to need to do is upload that image so i'm going to do this in the most simple to do way i normally would do this using google drive however google drive takes a little while to set up so we're going to skip that we're going to do an http request node we're going to do it as post and then in this step we're going to upload it to imagebb.com so you're going to want to go to imagebb.com make a free account it's completely free then go to API and in the API page I'm not going to pop it up because it will show my API key and you'll need this API key for this next step but like I said you could do that in about 30 seconds just sign in with Google get that API key completely free 
And then what we're going to do is I'm going to reference one of my old automations. We are going to give it this URL. I'll have all these URLs and whatnot in the description or in the document. So this is the URL, but this one has my key. So you're going to, in the description, I'll, I'll just say your key. You're going to need to replace everything that says your key with the actual key you have. And that will allow you to upload it to the correct image BB account. Okay, so we don't have to do any more authentication because it's just in the URL. Then we're going to tap on send body, do form data, and then parameter type is going to be form data, and then the name, which we have to pass to image BB as image, and then the value, that's going to be the value of the last node. So we're going to execute that node, and I'm going to upload this picture. I'm going to say mail, and this is going to get us the output of the first node because I never actually did this. Once we do this, there we go. Um, I actually gave it the wrong image, uh, but that doesn't matter. It, all that matters is what it calls it. So this is all the outputs of the previous node. So we finally did the first node, which was the form submission. And you can tell it looks like it's just named image with a capital I um, based on what we named the form on the previous one. So I'm just gonna do image here and I'm gonna test this step and one sec. Okay, I actually messed up one thing. The second one, we don't want to be form data. We want it to be a binary file. And then we're gonna retype that image like it was here, and then it should work this time. Okay, perfect. So now we uploaded the image, and we can go there. Um, this is the image URL, but this, this is the one that we want. So for example, here we go. So this is the wrong image, but when I get to the next step, I'll, I'll upload the right image. So just to reiterate, on this node, you're going to need the URL in the description. You're going to, after the equals, put your key. You're going to check these off, this on, form data, N8N binary, name is going to be image, and mine I did with the lowercase here, just in case. And then here, this one is going to copy exactly what it says as your input, or sorry, your output for your first step. So I think I named that field on the form image, so it came out as the file as image, and then this uploads it and gets it to the URL, so now we have everything we need to request the official API. Okay, so the next thing we're going to need is another HTTP request node, and then this time we're going to hit import curl, and then we're going to go to this page, link, link down below, and we're going to copy this curl example, paste it into here, and it should overwrite the stuff, and that's okay. So what we're going to do here is notice that we have the URL. Now it's sending these headers. Now the one header that we're sending here that it'll automatically put in is the name, which is authorization, and then bearer space your token. So I'm going to show you a better way to set this up. So we're going to remove that. The other one we can keep. We're going to change authentication to general credential type, header auth. And then here, I already have mine, so it should be working. Uh, but if you don't, you're going to click on this. You're going to need your name to be authorization. And then you're going to need the bottom part to be bearer, spelled exactly like this, space, and then your API key. So you're going to need to go to Replicate's website, which I'm here. You're going to need to go to your profile, copy your API key, find that. And then you're going to paste that into this value. And then over here, you can rename it to replicate so that you can use it in the future. So this should be good for me. I'll double check soon to see if that works properly. Then all this is good. And then send body. Um, everything here is good. Instead of the gender being female, though, we're going to want to delete that. And we're going to scroll down. And we're going to, for some reason, there we go. Let's see. I put my cursor right there. Okay. It's not working, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut this and then I'm going to go to this portion right here and then I'm going to paste it in and it should be good right there. And then the second variable we're going to need to change is that input image. So I'm going to remove all this text. We already have it uploaded and we have the URL here, so we're just going to drag the URL here. This time it inputted properly. So just in those quotation marks, I'm making sure that I have my image URL from the HTTP request step, which is uploading it to ImageBB, and then I have the gender 
which should be answered on the first question. So I just drag this variable in between those quotation marks. And then let's test this step. Okay, it looks like I think I need to update my API key. Okay, I was able to fix that and now I'm having this other issue. It might be because of the capitalization, so let me try that. Okay, so I'm submitting the form again and I'm typing lowercase mail. We'll see if this works this time. And there it works. So keep in mind, you're going to have to use a lowercase male or female. You could format that text, but we're just going to be quick and make it so you have to do it correct. And you can see its output was right here. I'll copy that and paste that into it. And you can see this is the result. So it made me a correct headshot. And now the last step is to send that off uh, either as like Telegram or email. I think I'll go with email. Okay, so I stopped going from live building to I just built it and now I'm going to review uh, the last few steps I did to make this work and just so it's more straightforward. So we left off, we had these two nodes. So then what you're going to do is you're going to want to create a wait node and we have it wait for 20 seconds just to make sure that it comes out with the output on time. And then you're going to do another HTTP request node. On this node, you're going to want to do get and then you're going to drag in the URLs for you're going to want to drag in this variable the get variable into the URL and the reason you're going to need to do this is so that you get it after it does the request not before you do the request you'll need the same generic auth type header auth replicate as we had before that would get you all this output and then we're going to do another one and the reason why we're doing these two is just so we can upload it on image bb so it'll last forever and replicate will delete it after an hour so if the person hypothetically was to check their email too late um it's not going to work so here we just do another http request this is a simple one it's just git and then we just get the output url so the output url is here so i just drag that over into here so then we're getting that output url and then we're going to have this file type data. Now for this last request node, you're just going to want to copy this second one and paste it over here. And then obviously you're going to have to hit, you know, rearrange the wires correctly. So this one goes to that one. And then when you open this one up, same thing, you're going to want to make sure your image BB key is in it in there like it was before. And then the only thing you're going to need to change is the input data field is just going to be data. So now this is taking the file. So just in summary, this is getting the URL properly then this is taking the URL and downloading it to a binary file. This is uploading that binary file up to image BB, which is giving us a URL. And then finally, you're gonna do a plus, you're gonna do one more, which is Gmail, send message. You're gonna to need to connect your account, which you can do just here, clicking sign in with Google. That will work. If you're self-hosted, you're gonna to have to look up a tutorial on creating your own OAuth to do that. Um, but once you do that, come back here. Then the last step we have is this to field. So I actually, I should show you this. On this form submission, I just created one more field type. Just hit that um, add form element. I did field name, email, text required. So that when we go to this one here, the to, we just scroll down. We take that email that I entered and we just drag it into there. And then you can t type whatever subject you want and then email is text and then I just said here's the link and then I scroll up to the top this last request we did I just got the URL drag that in here and then once you run your automation I'll show you what it's like so this is gonna be the final run I'm gonna test the workflow I'm going to upload my photo I'm gonna type mail lowercase I'm gonna type in my email address we're going to hit submit. It's then going to run through all the modules. And there you could see it did them all. And I'm going to go to my email. Okay, I got this link. It just says here's the link. I would have just entered the form um, that you can host online. Just send to anyone. And then boom, here's my portrait. So it worked out. And that's pretty much it for the video. I'm going to be creating a full in-depth guide 10.8n. If you got confused with any of that, that should be dropping somewhat sh soon. Make sure to follow my YouTube, Adrian Viral AI Marketing. Thank you so much, and I'll see you guys later.